Last year, we introduced you to the Taos 5 3D printer from Lawsbot. And at the time, that seemed pretty impressive. But now the boffins over at Lawsbot appear to have extruded the future itself. Building on lessons that they learned from their smaller, sportier Lulzbot Mini, the Taz 6 is like the Taz 5, but one more. With all of the bells and whistles you've come to expect from the Lulzbot name, things like a heated PEI print surface and a modular tool head design, they've added to that integrated automatic bed leveling and improved airflow over the Lulzbot V2 hot end. They've taken the big, ugly power brick and they've actually put it inside the printer. They've even included this little velvet kerchief to keep your tip clean. And that's fine and all, but even a machine as sophisticated as the Taz 6 still doesn't take out all the guesswork of 3D printing. For one, there's a vast number of materials available for 3D printers, and the Taz 6 can handle nearly all of them. Which begs the question. Which filament do I choose for my prints so that I don't look like a fool at my next dinner party? PLA is a mainstay of the 3D printing industry, and for good reason. It's inexpensive, it extrudes at low temperatures, and it has a relatively low coefficient of expansion. Unfortunately, it is quite rigid, and that makes it a little too brittle for most jobs beyond basic modeling. ABS, on the other hand, has none of these problems owing to the fact that it's much chewier than PLA. It does require, however, that your printer reaches temperatures of up to 240 degrees Celsius, which is beyond the capabilities of lesser printers. Now, if you do have a printer like the TAS 6, which is capable of reaching higher temperatures, there are more exotic options. Copolymers, like those made by companies like Tolman and Chromastrand, offer smoother finishes and better mechanical properties than traditional plastic filament. The proprietary blend of filaments in products like Tolman's Invent and Chromastrand's Innova 1800 make for a print that's more workable and even comply with certain FDA regulations for food contact applications. Yes, but if you want a model that can withstand a lot of mechanical stress and impact, there's really no substitute for nylon-based filaments. Tolman's Alloy 910, for instance, is widely considered one of the strongest materials you can print on a consumer-grade 3D printer and is renowned for producing clean-looking objects. For an even more rugged print, many people turn to Telman Bridge, which bills itself as an industrial high-strength nylon filament. If your object requires some flex, look no further than PCTPE, which boasts up to 400% elongation at break. But that's all very dry and, well, boring. So we've concocted our very own rigorous scientific test to determine beyond a shadow of a doubt which of these materials is truly fit to print by subjecting them each to a mechanical stress test administered by this very carefully calibrated and incredibly sophisticated pummeling machine. Which, of course, we'll be handing over to our tame racing driver. Some say he's extruded entirely from a mixture of nylon and that feeling you get when you're being watched. And that his Tinder profile picture is nothing but a hypnotic spinning wheel. All we know is, he's called Greg! What we've done is printed a number of identical wine glasses from each of the aforementioned filaments and placed them in the trajectory of this high-powered 4x4. Now, there's no question that each of these wine glasses will be destroyed, but it's the way in which they get destroyed that we hope will illustrate the different properties of these materials. As you can imagine, almost none of our subjects survived our testing, but it's the way that they broke that we're interested in. The ABS, for example, didn't shatter and it didn't deform either, it just sort of broke along the laminations, which is what you'd expect from a material that isn't quite as hard as some of the others, but also isn't quite as brittle. The PLA, on the other hand, is a brittle material, and as you can see, it's shattered into a bunch of little pieces. 
Moving on to the copolymers, the Innova 1800 and the Invent, we can see that they broke at the stem and actually the base of the Innova 1800 seems to have vaporized completely. It is interesting to note, however, that the cups are still intact, so they seem to have been thrown free of the carnage and survived the bounce off the ground. And finally, the nylon-based materials. First, the PCTPE, and it's our first survivor, which isn't surprising because it's a very soft, very flexible material. I'm guessing what happened is that it was pinched by the tire, thrown free of the carnage, and then just rolled away. The bridge is a little bit more structural, which means that it's also a little bit more brittle. And it's done something really interesting. If you pick up the cup and pull it apart, it's actually unraveled in multiple places along the lamination lines. Finally, it'll surprise no one to learn that the Alloy 910 fared the best. It's completely intact and still glued to its base, which is what you'd expect from a high-grade industrial nylon. So Sean, what would you say we've learned here? Certainly the materials have their own uses. If you want the ability to print inexpensively, use ABS or PLA. However, if you need something with a little more mechanical structure to it to hold weight or be rolled over, ideally, then copolymers or nylon are the way to go. And on that bombshell, good night. God, I feel like